I didn't know that was a job that would be possible for me or available to me. So I, I, yeah, it wasn't until after high school that I decided that this was something I was going to try to figure out how to make it work. I think with the help of social media too, I was able to see that there was existing artists. It wasn't just, you know, the artists that you learned about in history books that usually didn't become well known until they had passed away. <laughs> um, I could, you know, I could go on my phone and, or the computer and see, okay, there's living, working artists and some of them even look like me. <laughs> so this could be something I could do. Hi, my name is Amelia Cruz and welcome to my studio. Sometimes, it, you know, I'll get ideas organically or something will just pop up in my head and I'll, I'll get fixated on it. And I try my best to write it down so that I don't forget about it later <laughs> because I'm very forgetful. <laughs> and, you know, even if I don't end up using it, at least, you know, I have this long list to go through if I, if I don't feel inspired, um, you know, or if I just run out of ideas, now I have a list of things to go through. Um, or I also do have a folder of uh, photographs that I've taken of my friends or family members or myself um, or just things that I like and I'll use that to kind of start the painting and then from there you know I'll the story will come out or, or maybe there might not even be a story but um, that's usually how it goes. I'll, I allow a lot of room for my paintings to speak on their own or, or to guide me as opposed to me guiding it. So so I was always a very awkward uh, child and then going into high school though you know I'm I'm super self-conscious but I'm trying to find my place and oh, figure out a way to fit in. Um, so I would make friends and then I would lose them and then you know, make them again. And, and then I was always changing my style. And um, I ended up finding my good group of friends who were also awkward. So we just kind of stuck together. We're kind of like the weirdos <laughs> for a little while. Yeah, so I've been creating art ever since I can remember. <laughs> Um, it's just second nature to me. I, I had asked my mom when I actually began because I, you know, that's, that's all I know at this point. And she told me that I started before I even turned a year old, I would draw my, my fingers. I would get, grab a pen and draw little happy faces. Um, and so from there, um, my aunt did take notice, um, noticed that I, I was always drawing and and she would put me into art classes whenever she could. And then in school too, whenever I had the option to take an art class, um, I, would, I would be in it. Yeah, so I definitely try to immerse myself into nature as much as possible. Um, I think not only is it healing for myself, but it's also, you know, you can take inspiration from it. And I used to try to go on hikes. Now it's getting a little hotter. It's I've done it less, but hikes were my favorite thing to do. You could just, I don't know, take a deep breath, get away from uh, everything else, you know, from your phone and or your normal daily projects. So. I was born in San Diego and we lived there for a very short period. I think we lived in Tijuana for a couple years and then we moved to Simi Valley, California and that's pretty much where I've been ever since. <laughs> so yeah, I was about three when we got here. I definitely consider myself a spiritual person. Um, I actually grew up Catholic and 
I strayed away from that though a while ago, but I, you'll see components of it show up in my, my work. Um, very small. I think there's a self portrait where I have, I'm wearing a cross and it's breaking off of me. And I, I think I did that because I still think about, uh, some of the prayers or teachings that my, my grandma gave to me. I think I still think about her teachings and her prayers because to her, that was her way of kind of providing the safety net for me. You know, she wanted me to feel safe and secure. And I think now with spirituality though, like it's not, I'm not practicing any type of religion. It's more just me accepting that there's, you know, greater things in this reality. You know, there's so much unknown. And I like that idea, you know, that's not just this present moment there's something else beyond this um and it don't it definitely shows up in my work I and that's honestly something I I didn't really even mean to do it just started appearing after a while and I just go with it <laughs> I think a lot of my paintings are also very intuitive and I like when little things happen like little messages show up and things that I can't really help I've been using myself and my sister as the main models for most of these pieces. Actually, all these new current work, new current paintings. I allowed myself to be fully vulnerable, which I, I mean, in my older pieces, you did see that. But I think now, since I am the subject matter in a lot of these, it, it just made it a lot easier to just put myself completely in this piece and allow you to see pieces of me that or parts of me that maybe before I didn't want you to see or, or maybe was like still a little too self-conscious I don't see any reason not to do that my work is about me oh what is so wrong about using myself as a model too so yeah I think you see that in the, the newer pieces a little bit more I still haven't gotten to the point where I feel comfortable enough asking someone to, to model and I I think it does make a difference to be able to paint from life. I, I was able to to do it and for a, a few of my um, I had a couple of painting classes where we had a live model and we would use up the whole class to paint them and there's just something about being able to do it when you're sitting in front of them and it, it makes a difference, but I, I don't have that uh, resource necessarily. Um, so I, I just try to make the photograph work as best as I can. So usually uh, the ideas will pop up in my head and then that'll help me take the photograph that I need for the reference. There's very few times that I, I'll just use the photograph alone. Um, and even when I do do that, I'll like, I'll, I'll reference the photograph and I'll, that'll be my starting point. But then after a while, I'll, I'll get more ideas and I'll, you know, move the painting around so that I can, I can fit that, that new story that I have going on in my head. Um, but I'll, I'll go back and forth, you know, sometimes, sometimes I'll just use the photograph by itself and, um, and if I'm lucky though, I'll, I, I like the ideas the best that come up the ideas that I like the most are the ones that come up organically or you know I see something and I I'll, all of a sudden have this really cool story that I want to try to depict and um, work from there so my color palettes change I get really fixated on a certain color and I don't do that on purpose <laughs> I I think I'll just find, I'll pick up a certain color and I just really like it and I'll, 
it's the it'll just be the color that I keep reaching for for the few set of paintings that I'm working on so lately it's been pink and I'll use that as my undertone um, and then from there once I'm building up the colors you know it'll it'll be based around that one color so you'll see pink a lot in this current the current pieces and before that it was I think purple so I will use a lot of purple so it really depends on the color that I end up using for my underpaintings and I don't like to use sepias or browns but you know which is what you're usually taught in school I kind of straight away from that I think it doles out the colors a bit um, at least for me that's kind of what I, I, I felt like and I just really like vibrant colors and colors that pop out um, as well as colors that um, help depict this kind of like dreamlike work or you know a different type of reality because I paint really you know on the more realistic side but I also like my pieces to feel like they're not actually from this dimension or this reality so I feel like the colors I use help with that. I've always been drawn to faces and you know people and portraits and that's still the case now but I think I'm s slowly starting to get to a point where I might want to move away from it. I, I, I think I think that might just be the case in general, you know, as I get older, maybe I, I'll want to try to do different things. I don't want to be that artist that just um, is only known for doing one thing, which I mean, it's not bad either, but I, 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 I would like to explore and kind of branch out. <laughs> but I mean, I also, I like portraits and if I like doing it, then I'll keep doing it. To complete a piece, it can take anywhere from a year to maybe a month. <laughs> um, I've even had a few pieces where I had to complete in a, a couple of weeks, and I hate doing that though. I, I think ideally for all my pieces I'd love to spend months working on them just because I need, I, I like that time where you can, I, I like giving them time so that I can step back and then come back to, you know, step back and get it out of sight, come back to it, and then I'll, I'll see it with fresh eyes. And um, yeah, ideally that's that would be the case, but sometimes I don't, I don't have that <laughs> luxury, so I'll have to finish it within a month or so. So working with Hentified, oh, it was pretty cool. I mean, the way it happened, Marvin and Linda, the co-writers, they reached out to me over Instagram. They set up uh, a meeting online and they were really down to earth. And then they were telling me about the project and what they were trying to, you know, the message they were trying to send across. And I thought, okay, well, you know, all this is really cool and it aligns with my perspective but also I like the fact that they didn't try to change my work too much they they liked what I did and they just wanted the character to be making the work that I was making basically <laughs> so um it was really cool to be able to show my parents like hey that was that's my work it's on Netflix <laughs> yeah that was the best part <laughs> so growing up I really liked this artist uh, I still do I think his work is just really weird um uh his name is Francis Bacon I, I just was so intrigued with how I'm not gonna lie I was intrigued with his studio first first of all like it was a disaster and I've always been that kid who had the messiest room <laughs> And I think I just would see his room and be like, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> um, and, and then his work, of course, is just so 
I don't know, kind of haunting. And you might see that in some of my work. There, there's like a couple, few pieces where I'll make it, you know, on the darker side or there's like certain figures in there that are a little bit unsettling. Um, so I've always, I've always liked that. Uh, so there was his work. And then, of course, I was introduced to Frida at a young age and um, that definitely helped inspire me and especially as a little brown girl you know you didn't you didn't go to too many museums and see yourself in those paintings so when I saw her self-portraits um, it definitely opened up a a door for me that I I was able to just see someone that looked like her and and how she you know she painted all these self-portraits and she was also a storyteller um so yeah at that time growing up uh I think those two artists, but there was a, there was quite a few. Um, and now, oh, I have like such a huge list. Margaret Garcia for sure, because I, I mean, I love her work, but I was also really lucky to have met her at a gallery, uh, Eshimaya, and I was having trouble with skin tone at the time and you know, I was kind of telling her about that and she gave me quick advice on what paints to use. And, you know, that from there, it, it really did help my work out. So definitely her work. I think for sure also the color that she uses. Um, I have to mention also Judith, Judith Hernandez, her work, oh my God, the color. <laughs> is amazing. Uh, she's also a storyteller. Um, there's also Judy Baca. I really like her murals. Um, I love Shisu Saldamando's work and she's really cool. She's, I'll call her my mentor now. <laughs> and she has a lot of figurative work, a lot of portraiture. Um, Rick Ortega's work, uh, same, a lot of figurative uh, pieces. So yeah, I'm really into um, really colorful uh, and portraiture type work. Colorful, figurative portraiture. Definitely surround yourself with people that are going to be supportive. So I know sometimes that isn't the case for everyone and their you know, immediate group of friends or family. I think that's why social media is a great place to kind of help connect with, with different artists. And, um, you know, it can be really scary, especially if you were like me and I'm, you know, shy and introverted but it's really helpful and and the more you're involved with or the more you meet the more artists you meet the more you learn that we're all kind of like that <laughs> we're all really scared of people so yeah the, it, it it's just really helpful though to have a community of people that know what you're going through and as far as getting into colleges and if you're interested in them i think the best advice is to actually go to the college and talk to someone hopefully there's someone to talk to but I think being on the campus and, and having a feel for it 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 kind of it helps you know it helped for me at least I'm really grateful that my work is getting noticed and I'm really grateful also that people are able to look up to me and and also open up to me with their own experiences or how my work you know resonates with them and uh, you know brings up certain emotions but I'm also someone who's very scared of the spotlight and scared of talking to people I'm always 
I've always been that self-conscious, introverted kid. So it's something new. I I do still struggle with that. But I I think I'm always really, I, I just, I forget about it once people do start coming up to me and start, t start talking about, you know, how they can relate to my work. Um, that makes me really happy. Especially when people tell me that, you know, they're, younger daughter or their cousin or their friend looks like someone in my paintings I think that you know specifically um you know it's healing for my inner child as well you know I went to galleries and hardly ever saw my own face or someone that I found familiar um so I think it's great to be able to to you know play a role in changing that now present time so I think that's really cool I am a bit more vulnerable online I'm, I'm able to share the stories behind my work and they are more personal I, I think that allows other people to feel comfortable opening up to me and they'll kind of share a little bit of their story and you know sometimes we'll have a conversation about it and I think I think that's what helps too is that you know, I, I allow space for them to kind of talk about and share their own, maybe their own story. I do try my best to um, respond as much as I can. And, you know, I am truly grateful for it. So it's not like I'm, I'm doing this just for show. Like I'm genuinely like always so, uh, I don't know, surprised even when people respond so so nicely to my pieces and I just always want to say thank you <laughs> a million times.